Okay, so we're going to talk about compound inequalities, um, but very before we do that, compound inequalities uh, is important to discuss just in itself. The word compound, uh, I know a lot of people study in science class, and that is a compound element. So if you think about it, what's a compound element? And a compound element is literally just a combination of two elements. Um, so if I take a look at this and we talk about compound inequalities, I'm literally now just going to talk about the combination of two uh, inequalities. And uh, let's talk about when I involve two things, okay? Let's talk about the word and versus the word or. So and, what does it mean to be and? So the idea of and is this idea of both. Okay, so my answer must um, work for both. Okay, so it must work for both. So it must uh, satisfy, okay, both, okay, must satisfy both inequalities. Okay, I'm going to put inequalities there because I don't feel like writing it. Inequalities up here, so the or, okay, so the or means um, can be anything, okay, so or is, I I'm up in the air, or is, yeah, whatever, okay. Uh, or is kind of the idea of whatever, man, okay? Okay, th that's the laissez-faire attitude you have to it, okay? And means it has to be your way, and the or is kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, cool, man. I don't care. Either way works. So the or is, it could sa it just needs to, for this one, you just need to have something. Okay, so that's it. You don't need to satisfy both, but you do need to have something, all right? And... Um, so it just needs to work for something, all right? So that is the big difference. And is both, must satisfy both, and, and it must be satisfied both inequalities. So whatever answer you get, if you take a number that is in a particular area, okay? So thinking about a number line, okay? Because that's kind of how we graph these like inequalities. If I took, take a look at the number seven, okay? And I say to you, hey, I want a number less than seven, all right? Okay, we'll pick a number less than seven. All right, five. So five, yes? Five works. Five absolutely works, and I'm okay with that, all right? So now let's say to you, hey, I want a number less than seven, and then I say to you, all right, guys, I want a number also less than seven, but I don't want to go too far down, so I don't want you to go all the way down to the negative, so I just want to make sure that I want to have a positive number, so I want to also make sure that that x is going to be greater than zero, right? And now all of a sudden your buddy, you know, he's sitting there and he makes up a number and he goes, hey, let's give him X being negative one, okay? I'm not happy. And the reason I'm not happy is because yes, while negative one is less than seven, you went farther than I wanted you to go. And how do you know you went farther than I wanted you to go? Because and is this idea of you need to make sure that you're making both of them happy. So. The number less than seven, sure, negative one makes this inequality happy, but negative one does not make this inequality happy because negative one is not greater than zero. However, one small thing, remember that I could do is this idea of or, right? So could I do or in this case? What does or change this inequality? Does or change this answer being okay? And the answer to that is, remember or is this idea of whatever, man, I just need to have something something that's working, okay? So over here, is negative one greater than zero? No, so something's not working yet. But I go over here, is negative one less than seven? Then yes, absolutely it will work, right? So this is the idea of the and versus the or. So let's talk about solving some inequalities that will involve and and uh, or. So if I want to go through a compound inequality, one of the most uh, important things to understand is, is that if it's an or, it will say or. If it doesn't say or, then it's not an or, it's implied to be an and. So let's say I have this inequality that says uh, 5x plus 2 is going to be less than uh, 7, all right? And then I have this thing that says uh, 3x plus 5 is greater than or equal to uh, 20. All right. So now at this point, I have an and, okay, but I'm going to put or, okay, so I'm just going to put the word or there. 
And remember the or is the whatever, man. Okay, whatever works. I'm cool with it. As long as it, I have something that works, I'm good. So at this point, I'm kind of like, I'm in the whatever stage. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the answer to this one. Now, let's go and just estimate what this answer will be. So I call this the predictive analysis. So if you watched one of my other videos, remember that it deals with the idea of whatever um, X's are greater on either side of the inequality will tell you what type of inequality the answer is going to be. So this has five X's, this has zero X's, so my inequality is greater on the less than side, so I'm gonna have a less than inequality for the answer. Now I just solve this and I don't worry about inequalities or everything like that, I just fill in my answer right here. So I subtract two, subtract two, I get five X is less than five, so I get X divide by five, divide by five, so this particular case, I get x equals 1. Uh, it doesn't matter if I mess with the sign anymore. So equals, so that's less than. It doesn't matter anymore because all I'm doing is trying to calculate my boundary point at this point. So right now, I know that x is going to be less than 1. All right, it's an or, so that's important, or. All right, then I go to this 3x plus 5 uh, is greater than or equal to 20. So again, uh, using the predictive analysis, 3 versus 0. Okay, so there's no x's over here. Three is greater, three is on the greater side. So my x is gonna be something that's greater than or equal to. Now, I can go ahead and solve this and not have to worry about anything. So I can really make this, think of it as an equal sign. So minus five, minus five. So this is three x equals 15. Divide by three, I get x equals five. All right, so now I found my boundary and my boundary point, my x's are gonna be above that. So now we have or. So now notice, if this were and, things change because, let's think about that for a second. Is there a number less than one that is bigger than five? And the answer to that is no. So and, remember, is very particular and it must work for both. However, because this is or, all right, I can absolutely have a number less than one because remember, I just gotta have something that works. Um, so if I pick three, right, does three work for this? No. Does three work for this? No. So how do I show visually all the numbers that will work? But if I pick zero, does zero work for this? Sure, it works. Does zero work for this? No, but guess what? I'm in the or, so I'm in the whatever mode. So as long as I have something that works, I'm okay with it. But the goal is to show all the possible whatevers, okay, out there. So I get this inequal uh, this number line, so I want to graph it. So first of all, I put my boundary at 1, so there's my first 1. Now the inequality is not equal to, so that means I have an open circle. Now I want to show every number less than 1. Well, all numbers that are less than are always to the left, so therefore my answer is go to the left. Okay. Now it's the whatever, so okay, if this doesn't work, then let's make sure we have the other whatever option. So the other whatever option is at 5. Now this is an equal to inequality, so we simply just color it in. And now I want all the numbers greater than five. Well, anything greater on any number line in the world is to the right. So I go up and then I go over. Now, I understand that we have two possible area solutions. We only have one area of numbers that won't work. And this was the number like number three, okay? Three, I can't say anything in here works. Because remember, three, three is not less than one, okay? Because three is to the right of one, which makes it greater than it. And three is not to the right of five. It's actually to the left of five. So that won't work. So there's only one particular region that in the or I just can't have. So remember, or is whatever, but it's not whatever everything works. Or is just whatever, I better have at least one thing that works and I'm okay with it. So now let's talk about one small change. What happens if this were an and? Okay, now all of a sudden, does this graph make it okay? Okay, so now remember, whatever I say works, it must work, but it has to make happy, okay, both inequalities. So remember when we put things on a number line, we are marking the things that makes at least something happy for or. But and, is it better be an area that makes both of them happy? But when I say both of them, it better be as they read. So if I take a look at this particular one and I take a look at it and I challenge myself, okay? I have to challenge myself to think about the idea of and versus or, all right? 
So again, I might mark my boundaries just for the heck of it. Okay, there's that and there's five. All right, one and five. But now I have to really truly ask myself, if this is an and, all right, numbers to the left of one, give me a number, zero. Is zero less than one? Yes, is zero less than, or is zero greater than five? So zero is it to the left of one, zero is to the left of one, good. But is it to the right of five? Well, no, if zero is here, it can't be the right of this number. So zero is out. So if zero is out, then really what we see is any number left of one is out. Three, okay, is three to the left of one? Three is not to the left of one. So essentially, if you think about this problem, I'm asking you to mark one point that is both to the left of one and the right of five. So I need to mark a point that is both here and here at the same time. And unfortunately, that is not possible. So if this were an and, okay, because I can't satisfy both of them, okay, this actually ends up being no solution. Okay, so that's an important idea of the and versus the or. So I don't just get to graph both of these for or, and remember, has to satisfy both. So let's talk about another and, and then we'll be done. So the and video that I want to talk about, um, I think I'll do in another video for this time. All right.